we very well know when axis of rotation is not fixed then uh, the motion we can understand by just separating that complicated motion into pure translation and pure rotation okay let's see one example to understand this better here one rod is given of mass m and length l it is placed on a horizontal frictionless surface gravity is into the plane and small m initially moving perpendicular to the length of the rod with velocity v not collides and it's given that it collides elastically and comes to rest okay we need to find the point on the rod which remains stationary just after collision initially rod is stationary so we need to find which point will remain stationary okay now you can see that motion of rod after collision is complicated okay so what we will do is we will see its translation motion and rotation motion separately and uh, velocity of any point is nothing but vector sum of velocity due to translation and velocity due to rotation okay so let's see this example in detail so i can say that this is the initial situation mass m and length l small m initially moving with v not rod is at rest so this is before collision okay after collision i it's given that the small m comes to rest and motion of rod is complicated so i say that it translates with vcm and about center of mass it rotates with omega because we know whenever axis of rotation is not fixed okay body tends to rotate about center of mass okay now here if you take small m and capital m as a system there is no external force acting on it so therefore initial momentum must be equal to final momentum initial momentum is due to small m only so it will be m into v not finally small m comes to rest so it will not contribute to any momentum and this rod is moving with vcm so its linear momentum is capital m into vcm okay so this will be our first equation okay now second again if you take small m and capital m as a system you can see that as it collides this this colliding force will not produce any net torque so here i can say that net torque will also be zero so therefore i can conserve angular momentum also and here angular momentum i can conserve about any point i can conserve this angular momentum about any point okay but here i should choose a point i cannot randomly choose a point i can but the calculation becomes little difficult okay so here what i do is let's say i take a point along the final direction of vcm initially vcm is at rest the velocity of center of mass of capital m okay so let's take a point here let's take point a now what is the advantage here after collision this is translating as well as rotating okay but if you take a point a such that it is along vcm then angular momentum due to translation will be zero because r perpendicular is zero so one less term you have to write okay. so let's do this first of all uh, about point a i want to conserve angular momentum so initial is equal to final initially rod is at rest it will not have any angular momentum and here you can see that uh, due to small m this is the linear momentum into r perpendicular so what will be its angular momentum m v not into l by 2 Finally you can see that small m comes to rest so it will not contribute to any angular momentum about the same point okay and here this rod due to its translation r perpendicular is zero so this term will be zero translation term angular momentum is zero okay due to rotation there will be angular momentum that will be icm into omega okay icm is what ml square by 12 into omega okay this will be your second equation now using these two equations you can find vcm and omega okay from here what is vcm vcm is m v not by capital m and here i can simplify this two this will be 6 so here omega is equal to 6 m v not by ml very simple okay now let's come back to the question question was which point on the rod after collision remain stationary okay so after collision we know that it is moving with vcm and i have taken its rotation to be clockwise okay so here you can see that if i take a point above center suppose if i take a point here okay now due to translation its velocity is rightwards 
Due to rotation also its velocity is rightwards. So obviously net velocity cannot be zero. So that point has to be below the center of the rod. Okay. So what I do is let's take that point P here which is at a distance x. Okay. Now at point P due to translation what will be its velocity? Due to translation each point will have same velocity at center of mass. Okay. And due to rotation, rotation you understand, imagine this rod, this axis is fixed and it is undergoing pure rotation. So if it is undergoing pure rotation, you can see that velocity of any point you can easily find if omega is given. Okay, That will be nothing but r omega. So this point you can see that it is rotating like this. So this point due to rotation, its velocity will be x omega. This is due to translation, this is due to rotation. Okay. And if this point remains at rest, that means net velocity should be zero. That means VCM must be equal to x omega. Let's put the value of VCM and omega from the above calculation. Here we have seen that VCM is nothing but small m V naught by capital M and x is as it is omega is 6 m V naught by capital M into L. Okay, these terms will be cancelled and uh, what you get x? x will be equal to L by 6. Okay. So that means at a distance L by 6 from the center, you have this point P which at which or which will remain stationary just after the collision. Okay. So remember whenever axis of rotation is not fixed, the motion is complicated. So what you do is you understand the motion as a combination of translation and rotation and apply all the concepts of translation and rotation separately and then combine it. Okay, Velocity of any point how you will find that is nothing but as we have seen it will be vector sum of velocity due to translation and velocity due to rotation. Okay, We will see the same concept in the next example also.